So right now I'm in Minsk, uh, which is the capital city of uh, Belarus. And right now I'm gonna head to the hotel. Um, so in Belarus, I actually got a rental car. So I plan to drive this car all the way to the, uh, uh, the borders on the west. Um, wish me luck. <laughs> This is Minsk, uh, the capital of Belarus, a country that emerged after the fall of Soviet Union. To better understand Belarus, we have to talk about its history. To make it simple, Polotsk established as a first nation state on the land of Belarus. It then joined the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and subsequently joined the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth through a political marriage. Then Russian came along and took its land for over a hundred years until the World War I. And then there comes Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic which later became a part of USSR. And in World War II, Nazi Germany invaded again, and cities including Minsk and Brest are now considered hero cities for their resistance against Germany. And it wasn't until the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990 that it became an independent country, given the name Belarus, that it literally translates to White Russia. However, don't ever call a Belarusian person Russian, even if most Belarusians speak Russian instead of their own language. And yes, they do have their own language, which is like a mix of Russian, Ukrainian, and Polish. But only a fraction of people can understand, read, and write Belarusian, and many of which are from the rural area. This is a direct result of the Soviet Union regime. Even though communism is a past, there's still many remains of it. For example, the statue right behind me. Walking on the streets of Minsk is like walking on a communist paradise. The streets are clean, roads are wide, and there's a low unemployment rate because citizens have to pay a fine if they don't work. I was more than once surprised by this unvisited hidden treasure. This is Mir Castle. Uh, we're going to spend the night here. Uh, we just got some awesome footage of the drone. Uh, I'm going to show you guys now. This is the fourth and the last castle we're gonna see today. The first one is the Mir Castle, which we spend the night, and there are two other castles, and this one in ruins. When exploring the countryside of Belarus, uh, you can not only find the um, communist buildings, but also you can find those hidden treasures like this one.
So Belarus is not just a place where you can find great castles or traces of communism. It is also a great place where you can find modern street art. In here, it's a collaborative work by Belarusian and Brazilian graffiti artists. It's a very big graffiti in this street, and this street name was uh, Octoberska or Ulica Brazil. Done. <laughs> I was so honored to have some Belarusian friends taking me everywhere, and we talked all night long, from their food and culture to the controversial leader Alexander Lukashenko. Belarus might be one of the least visited and most secluded countries in Europe, but I was so captivated by their stories and ideas about this country. One thing really struck me when we started talking about the national identities: their country name, food, most commonly used language. And their foreign policies are under a huge influence of their neighboring countries, notably Russia. There was actually a huge effort taken on de-Russify. Nowadays, the Belarusian language is taught in school, and many of the description board in the museums I visited are now in Belarusian. I still remember the look on my friend's face when she was half sitting on the edge of the window holding a cigarette, and she said to me, "We look exactly like the Russians." And we speak Russian, whether we like it or not. Belarus is a new country, and it takes time to figure out how to be Belarus. And it really got me thinking about how important it is for a nation to establish and preserve its own culture and identity. But honestly, to me, Belarus is unique in its own way, with the old USSR buildings, the incredible castle living experience, the mix of Western Europe and Eastern Europe culture, and most importantly. The hospitality of the Belarusian people. However, I am by no means an expert of this country, and I have barely scratched the surface of Belarus. One thing that I wouldn't doubt, though, is that you have to come here yourself to get to know more about Belarus, and I promise that you wouldn't regret it. Now, the citizens of 80 states can enter Belarus visa-free for five days through the Minsk National Airport. So, what are you waiting for? This is a palace of arts, uh, and we uh, have exhibitions. Into exhibitions in this. Yeah, American idiot. Yeah. The American idiot. <laughs> Ni hao, chayo, shishi.